So now the cells and tissues, so a more microscopic level. Um, let's, okay, let's do it. Here is um, inside of a bone, and I will be focusing on compact bone anatomy. That is all of this. Um, this here is the spongy bone. I'll actually point to that one thing, that is a trabeculae. And so this whole region here is spongy bone. The rest of this is compact bone, and that's what we will see in lab. Um, it's made up of these, these osteons, which are these circular units here. So first, let's repeat some other um, structures we've seen before. The periosteum surrounds the entire bone, that compact bone. And then I want to talk a little bit more about, I've mentioned this, but Bone tissue is a type of supporting connective tissue that has collagen fibers. So a collagen matrix, but then it has very little ground substance. And the ground substance that there is, is um, has a calcium carbonate and some calcium phosphate mineral kind of infusion. So the minerals that surround the collagen matrix make it strong, flexible, and shatter resistant. So it's kind of like having steel rods that then are surrounded by steel rods, um, surrounded by cement or concrete, right? It's a very strong structure. So the matrix, the extracellular matrix of bone is calcified. So it, that ends up being a solid calcified extracellular matrix. Bone also contains blood vessels, which is different than cartilage. These blood vessels are located in the central canal of going through this compact bone. This is a central canal of a single osteon. So all of these circular structures here, this one is labeled are osteons. One is an osteon, that's what's shown here. These are kind of the um, structural unit of compact bone and there's going to be cells we need to talk about because this is tissue. This is the extracellular matrix, but they're also going to be osteocytes and a couple other cell types as well. Um, bone is a growing tissue, so it's constantly broken down, which is called res resorption and then growing again. So about 10% of your skeleton in adults is turned over in a year. I will talk more about resorption and growth later. Um, and then, okay, so let's zoom into this osteon, which is basically the structural unit of a compact bone. It contains one central canal that has the nerves and blood vessels in it. In it. And then it's these kind of concentric circles um, of surrounding lacuna with osteocytes inside. So here are some individual, I'll do that in a different color, individual osteocytes. You can't really distinguish the osteocytes from their lacuna. Lacuna are the cavities or the holes where osteocytes live. The, because of the calcified matrix, it's a very tight spot. So these are osteocytes in their lacuna. You won't be able to tell the difference between which is which really like separate them. 
those osteocytes are connected to adjacent osteocytes via um, canaliculi. So here's an example right here. We can see those little canals that allow them to exchange wastes and nutrients with the adjacent ring, um, the next ring of lacuna. Okay, I think that's what I wanna say about this picture. Um, oh, do note here, I have zoomed in, right? Cause you can't really see here, but you can, when you see this picture, this is an osteocyte. You can kind of imagine that this is what's, what is in there. Okay, so osteocytes are one type of bone cell, but there are others. So there are four types altogether. Osteocytes are the ones I've mentioned already. Those are over here. Those look kind of like what you saw them before. These are going to maintain the bone tissue. Just like chondrocytes do that in cartilage. So these are mature bone cells that maintain. They're mature. We also then have osteoblasts. These are located more on the um, more on the periosteum, right? That's the outside here. These are osteoblasts. Blasts produce a bunch of fibers, right? They're blasting out fibers. So these are going to form the matrix, the bone matrix, which is largely collagen is what that's making. And then the cal calcium and other stuff is gonna get stuck in that matrix. And then, so, and that's, I think that's periosteum is where this is located. Um, this one is located in the compact bone, the osteocytes. So this cell type here is an osteogenic cell. This is a stem cell that is able to go through mitosis and make new osteoblasts that then form osteoclasts, right? These are the immature bone cells that will eventually become osteocytes. So osteogenic cells are a type of stem cells. Stem cells in the body, remember, are derived for your, from the single cell conception that then reproduce and undergo mitosis and differentiate. Um, these osteogenic cells have lost their ability to become anything, right? But they're able to um, divide still and form new bone cells. Okay, so these are actually, yeah, we'll leave it at that. The last type is osteoclasts. Clast is like calamity um, is what I think of it as. These break down or re resorb is the word bone. Break it down. These are located in that endosteum. And these are gonna be really important for bone remodeling. I have one more picture actually of this bone resorption that I want to um, show you. So here we are in the endosteum, on the endosteum side, right? The, where the endosteum is located. So that means this is what an osteoclast. And I just really like this picture for a general idea of how this, this works. Um, this is almost like a suction cup. There's multiple nuclei, as you can see. And these osteoclasts produce acid and digestive enzymes to break down the bone kind of suctioned onto the bone here. Um, so this is gonna result in release of calcium. Um, we'll also talk about bone remodeling. And these are gonna be important for, for that. Okay, one consequence of thinking and, and application of thinking about osteoblasts and osteoclasts is osteoporosis, which is when bone reabsorption 
is greater than or exceeds, um, I'm sorry, is less than bone reabsorption. Absorption. So too much bone breakdown is occurring. Looks like this. This is um, osteoporotic bone. So it happens in especially older individuals, often older women. Um, in these individuals, basically osteoclast activity is greater than it should be and greater than relative osteoblast activity. This can be due to genetics, um, lack of bone stress. So exercise is, helps prevent this. Um, diets such as low in calcium or vitamin D, low in protein, smoking actually reduces calcium in the blood. So is a risk factor for osteoporosis. And then the reason older women especially are at risk of this is that um, estrogen levels are protective for osteoporosis. So estrogens actually prevent osteoclast activity or kind of inhibit it. So in menopause, when estrogen levels lower, women have increased osteoclast activity and bone breakdown. So application of why these cells matter.